One, welcome to Team AOU. I'm Gummy. <laughs> and I'm Cherry. <laughs> <laughs> and normally, you hear this on BOU, but... We are playing After Hours. And you're going to hear us voice act. Yeah. <laughs> Show off our as skills. Male <laughs> as male robots that have now feminine voices. <laughs> yeah, so that's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Bub. Uh, basically, editor Bub, I, I, uh, you, you need to make, just do the intro. I, I understand. I understand that we our intro was kind of stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Is the intro not stupid? <laughs> well, you tell Mr. Bub what he should be doing. <laughs> Roll the intro. <laughs> Roll the intro, crunk! Wrong Wrong level. Level. <laughs> no. Alrighty. I guess it starts now. What are we gonna name our character? Game, what's your name? Um, oh what is our name? Huh. Cheerum. <laughs> Cheer <laughs> Cheerum. <laughs> it's cherry and gum. <laughs> We're doing that. We're we're sticking with it. You want to do that? Are is you it, sure? I'm. I'm. Me is this correct? Yes. Oh, I don't know what we're doing. What are we doing? Oh God. Oh no. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Which one am I doing? Which one are you doing? <laughs> You're doing sun. I'm doing moon. <laughs> okay. We just. Okay. We need to establish that before we're doing anything else. <laughs> Cheer him. Wake up. No sleeping on the job. Wow. I jolt awake, a bright light in my eyes, and someone's hand on my shoulder. While I block it out with my arm, Vanessa finally turns off her flashlight and lightly scoffs in annoyance. How long was I asleep at this table? Lowering my arm, I have a small toolbox in front of me, and my phone is resting where I had my head laid down. Its shape is probably imprinted onto my face right now. Good Lord, Chiram, when was the last time you slept? Uh, I don't know. Probably a week ago. <laughs> probably a week ago. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> probably a week ago. <laughs> Very funny. Just get up and get started. I'll keep quiet if you do your job, alright? Yeah, sure. Alright, get to it. Vanessa walks off as I stand up and stretch, feeling my joints pop when I raise my arms above my head. Deciding not to waste any more time, I pick up my toolbox and phone before heading through the massive doors leading into the daycare. The daycare's bright lights and rainbow colors- Oh my gosh. You okay? The daycare's bright lights and rainbow colors are practically blinding compared to the rest of the pizza plex. Or maybe I just haven't fully woken up yet. Time to get this over with. I open up a panel behind the desk and cringe at the mess of wires in the wall. As much as I wish I could, I can't rush through this. I'll have to deal with each generator one at a time. Whatever, if it means I get to go to sleep sooner, I'll do it. Oh no. Click at the end of each cable of the in the correct order to proceed. Uh, yep. oh dear god. Oh dear god. That is oh, what am I doing? That is a very big mess. So you click at the end of the cables. Ah! Oh god, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> A freaking noise, right? <laughs> Oof, jump scare. Boink. And have a boink. <laughs> Standing back up, I stretch again, palms on my back as I let out a tired sigh. <sighs> that is, until I hear the faint sound of what I think are gears and other mechanical bits turning, followed by something landing in the ball pit near the back. I'm pretty sure it's just the daycare attendant. After all, they should be... They should be the only other thing in here, and the small stage leading into their room is directly above the ball pit. Not that I know a lot about them, the staff hasn't said much. And since I'm still new here, I haven't even met them yet, nor have I met the other animatronics like the Glamrocks or DJ. Most of the robots I've gotten acquainted with have been the staff bots all over the building. I start walking to the ball pit, scanning it for signs of movement as I stand on the edge. That is, until... Oh, Holy crap! <laughs> to be <laughs> I'm just, just scared already. <laughs> you can't jump. 
jump scare. Oh, hey there, friend. I don't remember seeing you around. Are you new here? Something or someone <laughs> jumps up in front of me and I'm suddenly lifted off the ground. <laughs> do you want me to do the talking now since you have sun? <laughs> you sure can if you want to. It's your choice. Go ahead, boo. <laughs> Before I could even answer, I noticed his eyes turn a light blue, scanning me. I'm stunned into silence, staring at the robot in front of me as he steps out of the ball pit, holding me underneath my arms as if I weighed nothing. Uh, yeah, can you put me down first? Which one? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ooh, that's so fun! It's not every day I see a new member of staff here. Gets pretty empty when the kids all go home, you know? I definitely have to get used to how energetic energetic this guy seems. <laughs> he finally sets me back down, making sure I'm able to stamp on my boat on both my feet before letting go. <laughs> Words. Thanks. And yeah, I'm new here and just finishing up my first week, actually. Ooh, and how's that been? Good, I hope. Yeah, it's gone pretty smoothly so far. I start walking back to the desk, but the tall robot decides to follow me. By the way, could you tell me your preferred name? My name's Sun, but people call me with all sorts of nicknames. Like Sunny, Sunray, Sundu. Some of the kids even call me Sumdrop, like the candy. Oh. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I thought your name was Sundrop until now. Oh, that's fine! A lot of people do that, and the name kind of stuck over time, which is fine by me. <laughs> cool. My preferred name is Cherum. By the way. Well, it's great to meet you, Cherum. <laughs> I can't help but smile a bit. But duty calls, so I make my way to one of the computers on the desk. I faintly see his face reflected on the screen as he watches what I'm doing. What you need the light for? What you need the light off for? To test all the generators in here and make sure they're working. Whoever messed them, messed with them last time, left them a mess. So I have to do it one at a time. Uh huh. Considering how wordy he's been so far, such a short answer tells me something's up. Then again, I just met the guy, so maybe I'm, I could be overanalyzing. Something wrong? Say nothing. Something wrong? Something wrong? No, I just noticed how tired you look, that's all. I'll be right back. Gonna get something for you. What? Why? Just something to help carry you through the night. Judging by how many wires and generators you have to deal with, I have a feeling you might be here for a while. Fair enough. Sun smiles before walking off somewhere. I put in the command to turn off the power in the daycare. Single one from the speakers on the ceiling it comes to a halt. Silence blanketing over the massive daycare as the computer screens become only light of Removing my flashlight from my belt, I turn it on as I start making my way towards towards the play structure since that's where the genera generators are located for some reason. It's eerie qui eerily quiet as I try to find the structure of the first generator. Lack of true ambiance forces me to step, my footsteps to echo. The glowing red light of one of the generators enters my sight, so I continue on. <clears throat> Somewhere above me, I hear gears turning. Shine my, I shine my flashlight towards the ceiling, only to see nothing there. Sun? Sun? I flinch at the noise of frantically shining my light to see what's there. That didn't sound like sun. Sun, are you there? Holy crap! <laughs> Darn it! <laughs> you want me to do this part since you're doing moon? Yeah. yeah. I've dropped my flashlight and I'm sitting on the ground after stumbling back from being startled. In front of me is the robot I've seen on the Moondrop posters, giggling hysterically. He seems proud of himself. <laughs> I sigh, pick up my flashlight, and get back up to continue what I was doing. Well, if I wasn't awake before, I definitely am now. 
He finally stops laughing after I say that. He makes a noise that sounds like he's clearing his throat before he starts to follow me. (coughs) Sorry. I'm sorry, Garrett. Does that sound good (laughs) for him? (laughs) I heard sorry, and then then you cut out. (laughs) Sorry for the scare. I couldn't help myself. That's really good. (laughs) Sure. I take the first path into the play structure as I as structure I see, hoping to find the first generator sooner rather than later. You're going the wrong way. Am I? I turn around and he has his arms crossed as he leans against the structure. Did you do the generator? If that would mean better. I think about it for a second. If this guy's anything like Sun, hopefully he actually means what he says. Fine. I crawl back out of the structure and he starts leading me to a different path. He clearly knows his ways ar- his way around since we find the generator rather easily. There you go. He sits beside me as I go to turn it on, his glowing red eyes watching me as I do my job. Maybe it's just me, but don't you think those red eyes are kind of intimidating for a daycare attendant? <laughs> yes, but I've been told that before. It was a bug that made them like this. But that's resolved. But that's been resolved. The red eyes stuck, but they don't. But they're not hurting anyone. Fair enough. The red does look kind of cool with the blue and white. <laughs> Why, thank you. I roll my eyes, a faint smile on my face. Now that I think about it, I never told you my name, did I? I no, it's Chirum. Oh, did Sun tell you? In a way, we're technically the same. You two do look similar. What does that mean? Your choice. Mm-hmm. You two do look similar. You two do look similar. Yes, but that's not all of it. We're two different people, but we share the same body. Which means I can see, hear, ev- see and hear everything happening while you and Sunny met. Oh, so does that mean Sun can still see in here too? <laughs> yes, of course. He says hello. <laughs> <laughs> hello. <laughs> Ooh. Moon laughs a bit, leaning back against the wall of the structure. Do you think you could? You should continue with that. I think I do think you should continue with that job of yours, though. Right, right, on it. Focusing back on the generator, I flip the switch and watch as the red light on the device turns green. Well, looks like that works. I flip it again before making my way back out of the structure and I hear Moon following close behind. Standing up straight, I attach my flashlight to my belt before stretching my arms above my head. I sigh, arms dropping back to my sides as I go to turn the lights on from the desk. I'll let you do this. I hear the lights turn on and the music of the daycare start playing as I turn around and flinch at the sight of Sun right there, smiling brightly. Hello again! Hey, so you two just switch out whenever you need to? Nope, it depends on whether the lights are on or not. I'm in charge when the lights are on, and Mooney's in charge when they're off. I still don't like that he decided to scare you, though. Enough. The sight of him irritated with his arms crossed was weirdly endearing. Hey, don't worry about it. I'm over it. <clears throat> Sun pouts, and Sun just pouts, and turning his head away from me. Small at the sight. Do they keep the generators in here anyway? Don't you think that would be kind of dangerous to keep the generators in the place where ki- kids would be playing in? Oh. Well, that's just a temporary thing. They got a bit out of commission, so thankfully they couldn't hurt anyone anyway. And then, and when exactly are these things getting moved? Sun looks like he's about to respond and then goes silent for a moment. I can literally hear the gears turning in his head. He just shrugs. Well, isn't that reassuring? Turn back to to the desk and so I could track. So I can keep track of my progress. On it is a short checklist to keep track of how the, each generators are working. Generators working. 
<laughs> I turn around. Uh, I start looking around for a pin when Sun sticks his hand out in front of my face, holding one of the cute little dinos holding one with a cute little dinosaur on the cap. Here you go. I smile at the gesture, taking the pin, so I can mark my. Thank. All right, here we go again. I go back to the cable sign at the tangled mess I still had to deal with. I have, I still have to deal with. Oh, yeah. I don't like this. No. Oh, okay. Boink. I have boinky. Boinky. Oh, good have guessing. <laughs> have boinky. <laughs> I stand up and take a look at my work. This is time to do it all again, I guess. As I turn, as I go to turn off the lights, I hear the music blast. Usually the radio with all pizza plexus closed for the night. Any idea what that music is? That's the DJ! He makes his own music, so it's not the ordinary to hear it during the night when everyone's gone home. I'd love to be friends with him, but I'm too busy to leave this place most of the time. Really? Yep. When was the last time you left this place? Uh... Okay, well, technically I've never left. But, every hour when the power gets rerun and Mooney goes on patrol around the pizza plex to make sure we don't get any intruders. He says the DJ makes for good company. Is it feeling the lack of sleep? The stress of, the, of a new job is really taking a toll on my sleep schedule, I guess. I, I think. Why do they need Moon to patrol the place? Intruders? I guess, why do they need Moon to patrol the place? I guess that would be best. Why do they need Moon to patrol the place? Isn't that what the staff bots are for? The staff bots help alert Moon to anything or anyone that shouldn't be there. I let out your l- I yet- Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> I let out a yawn- I, I let out a yawn as I go back to the computer. That's cool. Switching the lights off, the daycare once again descends into mostly silence. I hear gears whirring behind me as Moon hums slightly. Still tired, Jerome? Your... Oh boy, we gave that away. Yeah. It's your choice. Yeah. My thoughts. <clears throat> I hear Moon step away for a minute. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm sorry. You okay? Yes, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yawning again, I take my flashlight off my belt so I start to approach the play structure, stopping once I am a few feet away from the desk. I wait for Moon to come back since I have a feeling I'll get lost if he doesn't help me with the finding the other generators. Hearing the sound of gears whirring above me, I point my flashlight towards the ceiling. He's easier to find this time, probably because he's not trying to startle me again. He lowers himself to the floor, a long cable hooked onto his back from the ceiling. So that's how he flies around the place. There you are. Here, like this. He holds out an already opened <clears throat> oh, soda can for me to take. A grape flavored fizzy faz, to be specific. Thanks. No problem. Sunny meant to, meant to get it for you earlier. But I had something different in mind. He has a smug grin on his face. Yeah, you decided to scare me half to death. Come on live a little. I roll my eyes as, as I as take a long step of the carbonated heart attack in a can. <laughs> Checking the watch on my other hand, I see that it's already near, nearing one in the morning. For the hour I spend awake, I've gotten surprisingly little done. Great. You want to help with the other generators or what? Moon's expression didn't change. He just stares at me for a moment before speaking. You sound exhausted. I am exhausted. Shouldn't you take a break then? I take another sip of soda, raising an eyebrow. And do what? Well, I have my hourly patrol to take care of. You could tag along. You know what? Yeah, sure. I can't. I have to keep working. Which which one? Your choice. No, it's not my choice. <laughs> this you is your what? choice. Yeah. I guess, uh, you know... Yeah, sure. I guess, <laughs> right? Ooh. Ooh, the that was a moony one. It was a booty one. <laughs> Just as long as Vanessa doesn't see me, I guess. Moon's smile grew ever so slightly at my statement. 
but it seemed like more of a genuine smile than his gremlin look from earlier. I doubt that'll happen. The pizza plex is big, so the chance of her running into us are rather small. I know, but still. Trust me, it won't happen. Besides, take it easy for you look like you're about to pop. You'll pass out if you stand here for too long. I'd love to if I didn't have a job to do. The cable still attached to his back, Moon hovers ever so slightly above the ground before approaching me. Not right now you don't. Without another word, Moon wraps his arms around my torso before the cable lifts him up at least 40 feet above the ground. Holy! Panicked, I cling on to him as I stare at the ground far beneath us. Moon doesn't seem to react, simply navigating through the air, carrying me with him. Don't worry, I won't drop you. You better not. Moon clearly knows this place like the back of his hand because it only takes around a few minutes for us to reach the atrium, with the giant holograms of the glam rock still active despite the pizza plex being closed for the night. We pass over a few security bots who pay us no mind. Occasionally one will look up at us and then continue on with the same blank expression as every other bot. I eventually start to get used to being this high off the ground. Moon says nothing as he scans the area for intruders, thankfully sees seeing nothing out of the ordinary. Moon lands on a railing on the third floor of the atrium, likely about to change directions and head somewhere else. That is, until an alarm starts blaring from one of the speakers, from one of his speakers, and he suddenly turns to look in a different direction. Hopping off the railing, Moon sets me down before hovering off the ground again. Stay here, one of the stop bots alerted me at to an intruder. Before I can get another word in, Moon leaves, pushing off the railing to give himself a boost as he flies off. Sighing, I look up when I see another staff bot looking at me, seemingly confused. Just guessing by the way it stops and tilts its head when it sees me. It's hard to tell what these guys are thinking when they basically can't emote. You'll tell me if Vanessa's nearby, right? You saw nothing. <laughs> You wanted to you saw nothing? You saw nothing. I point at the bot. You saw nothing. The bot says nothing. Probably because it has no mouth. Because I am a robot, you weak-minded individuals. I nod in understanding before going to sit in one of the booths at, LA, at El Chips. Staring at the menu on the other side of the small restaurant, I remember something important. I haven't eaten anything since, what, this morning? Maybe that's also why I feel so out of it. If only I could inhale the pictures of food on the wall. I try the next best thing and search behind the counter for basically anything that's edible. I find an unopened bag of nachos. Good enough. I head back to the booth, opening the bag of chips and eating my makeshift lunch. Peering back into the atrium, the bot isn't there anymore. From where I'm sitting, it looks like the number of staff bots around seems pretty sparse in general. Maybe they're gone to wherever Moon is? Not that I know where he went, anyway. I don't think much of it, simply continuing to fuel up on chips while listening to the droning ambiance of the many bright lights in the atrium. Something bad's gonna happen. Oh, I can feel my ears ringing from the silence. That and the sound of me eating the chips alone becomes deafeningly loud. The lack of ambiance is almost unbearable. Standing up, I go to throw away the now empty chip bag, one hand in my head as my vision goes blurry for a moment. Walking back to the railing, I lean against it, looking down and squeezing my eyes shut as I tried to quell this nauseating feeling. When I open them again, my vision is still fading in and out while a strange red overlay seems to wash over what little I'm still able to see. Stumbling back, I look around for one of the staff bots for help, disoriented by whatever is happening to me. But instead of a staff bot... Oh god! What I vaguely see approaching me from the right is a gray humanoid silhouette and two bright red eyes fixated on me. Startled, I make a run for the stairs, hoping to find a staff bot somewhere nearby. My vision still hasn't fixed itself, in fact, it's gotten worse. As I misstep and tumble down the first short flight of stairs- Good god, are you dead? <laughs> Jeez! I think we're dead. I force myself back up, using the railing for support before something grabs the back of my shirt. Fight back, hold on to the railing. Um, um, uh, um, uh, uh, oh god, I don't want to die. Uh, oh god. <laughs> hold on to the railing? Oh god! I don't let go of the railing as I look behind me, now more clearly seeing the face of a gray rabbit costume with bright red eyes and a gaping black grin. What are you? I can't even hear my own voice. The ringing drowns it out completely as whoever it is successfully drags me away from the railing and back up the stairs as I try to grab at anything I can. 
Reduced to a rag doll, it gets harder and harder for me to try and escape as I'm dragged back into El Chips. The ringing is overpowered by the sound of my own heart pounding in my head. We're nearing the kitchen at the back of a small restaurant blocked off by a metal door. I'm running out of time. I try kicking my attacker, but they seem unfazed, using just one arm to drag me back as the other one wields a large kitchen knife. They're going to kill me. I'm just barely able to cling onto the corner of the counter, trying to buy whatever time I can. Call for help. For help. I try calling for someone, anyone to help me, unsure if I can even be heard as my grip on the counter starts to slip. Call for a staff bot. My attacker has both hands on the back of my shirt and is pulling hard. One of my hands slips from the counter. I can't hang on much longer. I'm going to die. Call for Moon. Oh my god, why are Moon! We help me! My hand slips from the counter and I'm dragged back. I'm practically clawing at the floor, but the costume stranger yanks me back before pushing open the door to the kitchen and throwing me in. There's no lights on in here, so I'm almost completely drowned in darkness as I land on the cold tile floor, save for the small beam of light coming from beyond the door. Oh dear. Looking behind me, I see that bit of light starts slipping away as the attacker silhouette starts to merge with the darkness, their red eyes being the only thing I see. And probably the last thing I see. The beam of light from beyond the door floods back into the room and the gray rabbit is nowhere to be seen. My vision finally starts to clear up as I look towards whatever landed nearby. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, handsome. <laughs> oh, am I? <laughs> hello. A different pair of red eyes looks back at me and lunges at me before two familiar robotic arms grab me and pull me back out of the kitchen and into the atrium. I can finally Honey, see- I screamed out of it. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I did screech on Manny. <laughs> oh jeez. I can finally see clearly and the ringing noise completely replaced by my racing heartbeat. Flying back from the atrium to the daycare, Moon's grip on me is so strong that he's on the verge of crushing my spine. He finally starts to slow down as we pass over the daycare wall, the once eerie silence hanging over us. He makes a smooth landing on the floor, the cable on his back unhooking and retreating back to the ceiling as I'm placed on the ground. He doesn't let go, though. He almost It almost feels like his arms are shaking. Or maybe that's me. I can't see his face. He's slouched in a way where my head is almost resting on his shoulder and he's staring at the floor. His arms finally loosen as if he just let out a relief sigh before letting go of me. I myself can't find words for what just happened. Whenever I open my mouth to speak, my mind completely blanks. Instead, I drop to the floor. My fight or flight is still kicked in and my hands are shaking uncontrollably. Moon's expression darkens slightly. Does he want to say something? His faceplate turns slightly and he walks over to something on the floor a few yards away. My flashlight. He silently picks it up and returns it to me. I'm pretty sure I can hear his fans revving up and he looks like he's deep in thought. He sits down in front of me, resting his faceplate on the palm of his hand. Did she hurt you at all? I fidget with the flashlight a bit. Battery's dead. No, thank God, almost. I'd say almost. Sorry for not being here soon. You should have let me stay there. Stay here. Sorry. You should have no, let me fine. stay here. It's fine. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, Mooney. <laughs> Could have died. Well, I didn't. You still showed up quickly enough that it didn't happen, so... Oh, gosh. Barely. <clears throat> better? Is that better? Barely. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I can hear you, sometimes I can't. <laughs> you need to tell me these things. <laughs> Why do you care so much anyway? I basically just got here and, well, you barely know me. Honey? This is my job. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I just don't look after kids that come the day. Everyone that steps into the building is my responsibility. And now that includes two, Shiro. Moon suddenly gets back up and walks over to the massive doors by the desk. Where are you going? Locking this place up. Whoever attacked you <clears throat> is still in the building and I can't leave you alone here to go deal with it myself. And bringing you with me is too... 
I watch as Moon moves various objects in front of the door, from desk chairs to smaller play structures, basically anything decently heavy enough to barricade the door. Can't you just lock it? <laughs> already did, but I'm not taking any chances. Eventually, I'm able to stand up again and go over to the charging dock by the desk to recharge my flashlight. Cheryl. Hmm? I'm guessing you'd rather get out of here sooner than later, right? Not in a rush to leave by myself, really. Yeah, kind of. I live alone, so... Oh. Still, you can't stay here forever. Well, whenever you want to keep going with the generators, just say the word. Right. I remove my flashlight from the charging dock, and sure enough, it works. I turn it on and point it back at the structures. Shall we? Moon nods, and we waste no time finding the next generator. Thankfully, it works just fine now. With that over with, we go back to the desk to turn the lights back on. Speaking of, I wonder how Sun's taking all of this. Moon did say they can both see and hear everything happening, even if they're not the one piloting the robot body. I catch a glimpse of the time as I'm turning the lights back on. 2 a.m. The take care is slowly lit up, and as usual, the music comes back on. I'll let you do this. <laughs> even with the cheerful music, the mood remains heavy as ever. However... I'm given no time as I'm spun back around by a worried son, frantically checking me for any injuries. Oh my gosh! Are you sure you're okay, Cherum? You poor thing, you must have been so scared! I'm so sorry we weren't there sooner! If only we knew we would've! Don't worry, I'm okay. Don't worry, I'm okay. Hey, it's already over. Don't worry, I'm okay. Son! <laughs> Don't worry, I'm okay. Son still looks guilty, continues to check my arms and torso to see if I'm hurt, but at least he's like a rag doll. <clears throat> I have to worry! Keeping everyone safe here is my job! If I can't protect one person, then- Visibly dis- is visibly distraught. His rays are practically drooping. <laughs> it seems- it seemed that didn't help much. Calm him with words, calm him with a hug, continue with your job. I think a hug, right? I think he's very affectionate. <laughs> Right, we'll do a hug. Ooh, sunny. <laughs> it's been... It's a bit of a reach considering how tall he is compared to me. Even when kneeling. But I managed to wrap my arms around Sun's torso, hoping that that'll calm him down. Sun doesn't say anything, instead hugs me back. His internal fans getting much louder. I feel like we shouldn't be here. <laughs> I think you need some alone time. <laughs> I think you you two need some alone time. <laughs> Damn, Cherum, you got some skills. <laughs> dude, dude, his smile. <laughs> he looks so cute. <laughs> oh. And uh, well. we could go or editor Bub, you could go ahead and cut this out and all that. <laughs> you and I did a freaking sinking. He has one arm around my torso and one hand softly holding the back of my head. Oh my god, get a room. <laughs> I really don't think we need to be here. <laughs> I don't think we should be here. It's a gentle hug. It feels safe. We say nothing for a few minutes. I was trying to calm him down, but honestly, this hug is a large comfort for, is a huge comfort too. No wonder they've trusted their trusted with kids. Even as adults, I feel an odd sense of security around them. Considering what just happened, it feels nice. Question. Huh? What was Moon alerted to anyway? Oh! A little boy snuck in to see Freddy again! He seemed irritated when he said that. When he says that. Again? Yep. This isn't the first time the little rule breaker snuck in here. Something tells me that security isn't as strict as you would like, as you would think, though. If a kid managed to sneak in more than once. But if he's, but if he just wants to see Freddy, then I don't really see a problem with him. It's not like the kid's hurting anyone, and I doubt Freddy's gonna let him get into trouble. Hmm. He seems almost playfully bitter. What did this kid do? Even do? 
Maybe I should ask later, though. I have I have to keep on going with the generators. I didn't get very far though before uh, I'm suddenly picked up by Sun. Oh, what the? What? Are, where are we going? Sun manages to carry me with one arm, using the other to move various o other objects in front of the massive door. Making sure no one's getting in here. Can't you put me down though? No. After all that, there's no way I can leave you on your own now. What if that person finds you here and we're not around? Son, we're in the same room. If that person somehow got in, I'm pretty sure you'd notice. Looking up at Sun's face, I notice a long cable lured from the ceiling and hook onto Sun's back. You heard, Moon. We're not taking any chances. <laughs> I screenshot that. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they pretty? <laughs> I don't know. You don't know? I don't know why they're pretty. <laughs> and why is this game free? I why don't is this know. Game free? It, the art is beautiful. It should not be free. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we suddenly we suddenly jerk upward, um, lifted into the air with sun. A bit much faster and more recklessly than Moon. Hey, at least call and let me call Vanessa first. I didn't I don't think she even knows about that freak since staff bots didn't react at all. Oh gosh, you're right! Okay, but we're making it quick. Sure thing. Sun suddenly changes directions in the air as we started heading towards the dusk. However, I think Sun tried dropping from the height of er way too early as we basically start free falling through the ball pit towards the ball pit oh shit <laughs> ah! grab on the sun or let go i'm grabbing on the sun what so yeah let's grab on to the oh. sun <clears throat> i am just barely able to grab on the sun before gravity takes me we we're, <clears throat> we're both tangled in the in the cable wire in the cable though once again, we're stunned into silence. And just when I thought things were calming down, I feel my heart going a mile a minute from the adrenaline and Sun's internal flat fan uh, blast. I keep clinging onto Sun for dear life as we're slowly lowered into the ball. Clutching my chest with one hand over my racing heart, I'm able to get get out of the tangled mess pretty quickly. Sun clearly is having a harder time. Though, just th just trashing in the... I guess it's trashing or is it thrashing? I think it's supposed it to be thrashing? thrashing. Okay, just thrashing in the tangled ca cable. Son, chill out. Let me get you out of that. No, um, no thanks. I'm fine. I can get my out myself. I sigh, standing in silence for about a minute until... As Son fails to get out himself. Son. Son finally stops, his face wave drooping into beat. Hmm... Do you want my help now? Fine. All right then, hold still for a second. Getting him out of the cable isn't hard. Once I'm done, I unhook the cable from his back and and it and let it retreat it back into the ceiling. I guess in a minute before I decide to speak again. You want to get out of the ball pit now? Yeah. I guess I can't tell if he's upset or embarrassed at what happened as we exit the ball pit, make the wall, no, no, make the walk back to the desk. That's kind of why I don't use the cable. Funnily enough, I just leave it to the moon. I just leave it to moon. Oh really? Actually, I find I kind of get it now. Not to diss you or anything, but Moon seemed to know what he was doing. I think. Yep, he has a lot more time to practice because of patrols. Plus being active whenever the kids are sleeping. So he doesn't go free falling or end up tangled in the cable? Well, no, but I could do it just as well. Not doubting that, you just need more time. You want to try it again then? I can keep a timer for you. <laughs> That's so mean. Mm. Not doubting that, you just need more time. Yeah, I think that's a nicer way to say it, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm not doubting that at all. You just need more time to practice. You just- you tried your best, and I can't really be mad. 
Sun smiled, Sun smiled sheepishly, his rays spinning a bit. Well, I am happy you think so. How he managed to be this endearing is beyond me. He's really a, as sunny as his name. I can't hold back my a smile as I go to pick up my phone. Glancing back at Sun, I pull up Vanessa's contact on my phone and hold it out for Sun to take. You wanna call Vanessa for me? I can work on the next generator in the meantime. Yes, please! Sun takes no time grabbing the phone and calls. I leave him to it as I to sort out the next mess of cables. And ah. do you think Okay, ah. after this, do you think we should end it? <laughs> I think so, because I don't know what's going on. One. <laughs> Two, wait, wait, two, <laughs> uh, three, uh, four. <laughs> okay, do you want to end it here or you want to keep going? Can we just keep going? I don't know, we do. What do you want to do? Budget, let's do it. Standing up straight, I shut my arms above my head as I glance at the sun on the boat. He has a device held in front of him, probably on speaker mode, and he seems concerned. Not that I'm... Not that, not that I was really paying attention to what he was doing just now. There, There's no need for that! I'm sure you'll see what I mean if you look at the cameras! Maybe not right now, but whenever you have the time! In front of him. His rays have shrugged a bit. What did Vanessa tell him? Say to him. Send glasses over to me for a moment before Vanessa starts talking again. He sets his attention back to the, on to the phone. If something really did happen, the staff bots would have let me know. But what if they don't? That should be possible. I'd, I'd believe it if it was oh, just one bot, but there are no way that many of them would not have stopped working. Would have just stopped working out of nowhere. Well, what if they didn't think the person was dangerous? Son, that's... They're supposed to go off if they see someone that shouldn't be there. Or be here. Look, I don't want to compl completely rule out what you're saying, but what you're telling me is just... just doesn't add up. I'll ask Cherim about it later. I'll have to go check on the kid again. Before Son can respond, Vanessa hangs up. Hangs up. His arms drooped into bead as I make my way over to him and his uh, back on the phone and he heads back the phone. she didn't believe you are you okay are you okay are you okay so forces a smile and waves his hand in front of him nonchalantly yeah i'm fine just worried yeah she thought it was this weird bug we had a while back that maybe it was making me see things that weren't there a bug? It's a long story. But she thought maybe I was hallucinating a rabbit we used to have here when I told her the person was dressed like a rabbit. What? Yep, I tried telling her that it was real since you were there and... There used to be a rabbit here? Uh, yeah? I don't know much about him other than his name was Bonnie and he was one of the glam rocks. Huh. Yeah... The others don't really like to talk about it, so... I guess that's something else that we could ask Vanessa about later. Maybe. Remember what I was supposed to be doing? I put my phone back in my pocket and go to the computer to shut off the lights for, a third, for the third time. Way there. Okay, so there's six generators. Ah. <clears throat> I'm glancing at the digital clock in the corner of the screen room. I mentally note the... I take a mental note of the time. Okay, do you want to stop at the third mark? Like, b before Moon starts talking? Should we do that? Yeah, because we did three generators already. I sigh, not wasting any time in... <clears throat> not wasting any time in turning off the light, turning the lights off, watching as the room dims around me, and some of the... And my only source of light is the screens coming from the charging station on the wall. Yawning, I step back from the computer. I know I have to hurry up and get this done, but now that my adrenaline is starting to wear off, I don't know if I can. I sigh and glance back at Moon, who's giving me a knowing look. Really tired again, Chirum? I don't know where you- I don't- 
Okay, should should we stop here? I don't know. I don't know how the how this game saves. Save? Uh save. save. Look at the save. Save four four okay, one. Four of one. Interesting. Four, four, I guess four scenes of one. I, I think so. I guess we're on scene four. Oh god. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. Okay. We are all right, okay. guys, um, this is going to be the end of the uh, episode of episode one. We're probably going to have to do multiple episodes and look up the different endings, how to get the different endings for this game. But other than that, Cherry, how did you feel? <laughs> Why are they pretty? <laughs> Why is that a thing? Why is this game free? <laughs> I, okay, I guess I guess the reasoning is because they're using the background of the game for the pizza for for the daycare and everything for the pizza plex and areas and all that. Mm -hmm. But they're only drawing sun and moon. But That's it's true. still pretty. Yo, that they are pretty. Are you guys so pretty? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. As you guys could tell, me and Cherry are questioning life. <laughs> we hope that you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed them as much as we did. And um, don't worry, we're gonna end up finishing this game. Because <laughs> what? And no matter what you might think, this game is actually pretty short for a game. And also, don't worry, Hogwarts is gonna be coming back soon. Yes, it is. <laughs> and I know that you guys are waiting for that. Mhm. Mm you have any final but thoughts for our for our viewers? Buy the, get this game. There is an option that you could actually give the person a tip. It's a free game, but you could tip them and give them money for the beauty of this freaking game. As you can tell, I want to give them money. <laughs> I want to meet this person and ask them why. So, person, uh, what are the, their names? Uh, hold on. Options. Yeah, I'm looking to No. History. Menu. I already saved. I'm good. Credits. Here we go. This is Snowy writing. I have a ton of people to thank for this project existing and I'm bad at words, but I'll try to get this message across. Jax, one true narrator for revising the script. Mocha, Valor, Seraf, K. Steelwool Studios for creating Security Breach and giving us such fun characters. Scott Cawthon, cool. Also, this is a fan game, everybody. This is not, this was not made by Scott Cawthon. <laughs> No, it was not. This is a fan game. And this fan game is so good, honestly. So far, it has been very well well done. The story writing is actually pretty damn good, which is very surprising for fan game <clears throat> at time. Because mm -hmm. some fan games. What is a uh, term that I could say that did not look like a total jerk? Um... Some fan games that are free are not necessarily up to par with a lot of the other games that you pay like $50 for. Yeah. But as you can tell, this game is very pretty. Even even the freaking screen of coming into the game is very pretty. This it's is animated. very pretty. It's very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so other than that, uh, I will be doing the thumbnail soon. Also, please subscribe to Team AOU. Go to uh, Cherry's channel. Aww. <clears throat> Thank you. And give her some love. Go to our channel, which is BOU Chat, and give us some love over there as well. Also, we have a Discord. Mm -hmm. We have a Discord that you can join. <clears throat> we have a Discord that you could join, and you could have some fun with us, the uh, members of Team AOU. And also give us game options, and also give us, uh, give me and Cherry topics of what we want to be uh, talking about of our BOU Chat. Other than that, Cherry, is there anything else that we need to say? Gummy's got a channel called Gummy Honey ninety three. Subscribe. <laughs> Raw, uh, editor Bub, cut that out. Cut that part out. Cut that part out. Anyways, guys, we hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>